2001, we had a bouncing baby boy named Tyler. We were married the following January, and 11 months after Tyler was born, we had a beautiful baby girl named Ariana. During the relationship, there was a lot of domestic violence. When my son was one years old and my daughter was only three weeks old, I decided to leave their father permanently. I was granted a divorce and awarded full custody with no visitation for their father based on his violent behavior. I had the children on my own for the next three years. I raised them and did all I could to make them become amazing children. It was my responsibility for their well-being and their upbringing. Life was good for Tyler, Ariana, and I. We spent all of our time together. They had a bond that was inseparable. As inseparable as they were, they also had differences when it came to eating. He was a stubborn eater, but she always liked to eat. He liked to cook. She loved playing with her dolls, and he loved his Spider-Man and Scooby-Doo toys. They were fun, loving, happy children. I didn't hear from their father for three years until he called around Christmas time in 2005. He told me that he had a new baby boy with his girlfriend Raina and that he was working and that he wanted to see Ariana and Tyler and for them to meet their new brother. He asked if he can have the children over a weekend to spend time with them. I reluctantly agreed, but I wanted my children to know their father and to meet their brother. The first weekend went well, so on January 20th, 2006, I dropped them off for another weekend visit. That was the last time that I would see my children alive. When he didn't return the children back on time, I repeatedly called him and told, and he told me that there was an open CPS investigation against me and that he was instructed by CPS to keep the children until the investigation was concluded. I fully cooperated with the state's investigation and after it was complete, the investigation was complete and the allegations were found to be unsubstantiated that I was allowed to pick up my children. Armed with my court order and police officers, I went to his apartment to retrieve my children. I was told by the police officer on duty that Chris was claiming that he had filed a motion against me for change in custody and that there was still an open CPS case. I called CPS and was told to leave the children with their father. I continually tried to call and do all I could to get my children. CPS would not let me go near the children, despite my court order to have them. My mother was the last one to talk to the children on the phone, and the children said that they were hurt. Myself and my mother continually tried to call, but he never answered his phone. I felt helpless in my quest to try to get my children back. Even though I had a signed court order and saw every legal means necessary to get my children back, the state still left them in their father's care and left me without any word. Months passed without any word from them and with nobody contacting me. My children were completely under my ex-husband's control. In February of 2007, more than one year after I last saw Tyler and Ariana, I heard of a news story about a little girl being found in a self-storage locker in a plastic bin. I felt in my heart that this was my daughter because I couldn't get in touch with my ex-husband. That is when a detective came to me and told me that they had found my daughter Ariana, but they did not know where Tyler was. They searched the storage unit and they also searched the landfill to find Tyler's body, but he was never found. Chris and his girlfriend locked my children in a closet for two months. They didn't feed them and barely gave them water. Tyler had a big gash on his head and it was left untreated. He and his girlfriend and their new son lived their lives without caring about my children being locked in the closet. They would go out with their friends and have their friends over. The children stayed quiet in the closet for fear that they would be beaten if they were to make a noise. He then, put the he then checked on the children one day and found out that Ariana had died of starvation. He then put Ariana's dead body back into the closet with Tyler, who was barely alive. Tyler also passed one week later. They put the children into gym bags and then into a storage container in an outside storage closet, and then they took them to the self-storage place. My life has never been the same since that day that I dropped my children off for that weekend visit. My life, along with my children's lives, were stolen from us. I have to wake up every day and try to be alive and try to be the best that I can, knowing of what happened and continue to still be as strong as I could be. I had to do this for a whole two years after the police had told me that my children had died and that my ex-husband had did this to them. This past March, myself, along with my family, had to deal with this incident again as the trial began. 
The trial was a time for remembering, it was a time for sadness, it was a time for justice. And justice was handed down for Ariane and Tyler as Chris was found guilty of two counts of first degree murder and was sentenced to two counts of death penalty. This will never replace the hole that has been left in my heart. This will never bring my children back to me. This will never bring back to the great life that I once knew. This will never bring back Ariana playing with her dolls or Tyler playing with Scooby-Doo. And this will be my purpose in life to help in all that I can to help prevent child abuse. Because of Ariana and Tyler, there are new state laws in Arizona for child abuse and child awareness. These laws should be a stepping stone for the rest of the country to follow and along and to protect our children from abuse so another mother or father will not have to lose their children like I lost Ariana and Tyler. We need to love, protect, and always watch out for our children at all costs because they are our future and they deserve to live happy, fun, loving lives without fear and without the thought of knowing that they were never loved and that they are never forgotten. Yesterday, many children cried out in pain. Yesterday, many heard that cry but chose to ignore it. Yesterday, many children died from child abuse. Yesterday, many had to live in guilt for ignoring their pain. Yesterday, many children went to heaven while many still suffer. Yesterday, many felt the heartache of losing a child. But today, today one's child's silenced voice will be heard. Today, one more person will stand up for them. Today, one child won't cry out in pain. Today, one person heard that child's cry, but they chose to do something about it. Today, one child will be saved from death. Today, one person felt proud because they saved a life. Today, one child will make it. Today, one person will do their part. What is the difference between yesterday and today? It's one person making a change. One person standing up for a child. One compared to many might not be big to you and me. But to that one child, that one person that made the difference could be life or death for them. If you believe in it, stand up for it. The most promising truth of all. Yesterday, many spoke of change. Today, one will do something about it. Many will speak of change, but there are few who will do something about it. Never doubt that a small group of committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. The world is a dangerous place, not because of those who dare do the evil, but because of those who look on and do nothing about it. Thank you, and God bless our children.